Ladies and gentlemen, another edition of Monday Night Football here on the Mexican Soccer Show. Let's go ahead and jump right in. We're starting early. Actually, we're starting on time at <laughs> 7 o'clock. But for us, that it's is early. early. It's early. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I am Weasel from Food Mex Nation. This is an hour-long podcast dedicated to all the things Giovanni Dos Santos, the Giovanni Dos Santos <laughs> podcast today in merit to uh, this final 23. That's all we're going to be talking about today. No, 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 no. We're going to definitely discuss a lot, a lot. And we're going to jump right in uh, with our questions. Not waste any time. And if I can get to a big question, if you could make one player swap with Mexico's roster. Who would be out and who would come in? And we'll start with Mr. Cesar Hernandez, San Diego, Tijuana area. How are you, brother? Yeah, doing well. I got a Wi-Fi extender, so hopefully this is good quality oh. right now. I found a good parking spot for my car, so today's been beautiful, man. But anywho, uh, yeah, if I if I had to switch uh, a player, I'd probably drop Jurgen Dam and bring in Cesar Montes because to be honest I'm pretty okay with the roster so I'll just bring in Montes just to give him some experience of training with the three again I mean, uh, so, uh, I, mean I know that's not the most ex- I know that's not Montes the most- get <laughs> over it Cesar no, dude, I mean, it's everyone's so Montes if I know anything no, dude, we said it everyone's, everyone's, everyone's gonna be talking about like Pizarro it's and, the like, Tocayo Gino, complex so- isn't it it's gotta be it's gotta be like <laughs> my name is Cesar my name is Cesar it's pretty tall man just, that was- that- I'm just trying to make it interesting, but I guess it kind of made it a little boring. But anyway. <laughs> uh, I, <was> gonna, <laughs> I thought you were going to say Gudinho. I, I think you could have stepped a little bit lower if you said oh. Oh, Gudinho no, no. in the. Uh, he's in Cyprus. He won the league. First keeper to win the league for as a nas- as, in, in, in the national uh, as, as a player. Sorry. All Feeling right. on the bench all season, though. <laughs> uh, Jason Markwood, Soccer Mexicana. Jason, one player in or out, uh, in and out. Easy for me. I, I'm I'm knocking Jurgen Dam out as well, and uh, I bring in Rodolfo Bizarro. He's my guy. Easy okay. for me. Easy, easy, easy. All right, and we have the colorful kit, Mr. Raúl Barraza, on with us today. Welcome, Raúl. Let's hear it. Are you going with the Jurgen Dam? Kick him out. I'm taking Jurgen Dam out, and I'm bringing Gio's brother, Gerardo Dos Santos' brothers. That third one. <laughs> Ener Dos Santos ever or Ener? I think it's. I think it's Ener. Ener, right? Yeah. yeah. Ener Dos Santos. Yeah. Play for. I think it was in the America Youth, right? And I, think I don't so, think yeah, he, yeah. He, he didn't make a sub twenty. All right. Bring all of Dos Santos. Heck, bring the dad in too. Two Why not? players for one. Let's all of Dos Santos. Can, Can we get Alejandro one? Vela as well? Maybe. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, like everybody's brother. <laughs> let's let's bring in let's bring in Araujo's brother too. What is it, Felix Araujo? I think oh, let's man. bring him in as well. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice, nice. All right. Well, let's see what we got in the chat. Uh, Jason, what do we got when we tweeted that out? Uh, we have a lot of responses of some of a similar. No, I'm just gonna bear with me here. Strap in. I'm gonna roll through them. Uh, at Kansas City in 87 says drop Geo. Add Pizarro. Uh, add to Evan says drop Molina. Put in Gaito. Um, at Tony R 248 says add Pizarro. Drop Geo. Um, Man. At Sunny SoCal Rob 25 calls for Rodolfo Cota to be added to the roster. Oh, that makes um, sense. Yeah. Um, oh, no, it actually does. We have a few calling for dropping Geo and adding Pizarro. Um, that's at Isela MR42 and at L3 de Mi Corazon. Drop Geo at Pizarro. Uh, we have um, at Asistencia Suave at asking for uh, Vicente Buoso being added to the uh, roster. Martinez that's Martinez Buoso. <laughs> I think he's playing indoor. Different way to indoor. go with that. Different I think he's playing indoor with. soccer in, the, in like Texas right now, if I ever correctly. It would be, be awesome to have him on my team. The roster, I suppose. I'm going to look for him. <laughs> come, join, come join my team. I'm going to try to sign him a football manager. <laughs> <laughs> At Brand Pride 12 asks for Paul Aguilar to be added to the roster. Hmm. Uh, Quitsi 3 says change Osorio. What a waste of two years. Um, <laughs> Jeez. At Ramirez 6118 says Jop Geo Grand Slam Dos Santos. At Pizzato. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> um, at Tony Guero Jr. says, uh, knocking out three, uh, both Dos Santos and Molina, and just put it in Cuauhtémoc. 
Okay. Um, one call for Bofo from JCW Kings. <laughs> um, at Boxing Fan 1313 says, Drop a Sario, add Miguel Herrera, or, or Voice of Teach. Um, let's see. Uh, another one here um, at Adrian SGK1 says, Drop a Sario, add Rafa Marquez as the coach. Uh, oh, interesting wow. approach there. Uh, friend of the show, Joel Tena says, uh, Drop Geo and add Picoline. Um, and do, 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 and uh, okay, here at Freeho Bean says, Get Geo. Uh, and then some few words I'm not going to repeat on the show. And put in Govea, Pizarro, Burrito, just anyone else. <laughs> and um, people are we mad. Got, we got a lot of responses. There's a lot of responses. anger here. Uh, tons yes. of anger, man. Uh, Daniel Benitez, uh, he gave me he gave me a whole bunch. He was kind of cheating here, but he says drop Gallardo at Jose Vela, uh, drop Alanis at Jesus Angalo. Uh, and to drop a rebay, Geo, Rafa, add Messi, Ronaldo, and LP. So, uh, there's a lot of ways to go. Right there. Ronaldo Cisneros. Uh, all right. I think that was the most responses we've ever had to a question. Yeah, thank, thank you all for your responses. Thank you for Jason reading them all. I'm like, we, nice, nice, nice. Um, all right. Well, let's get this show on the road. We'll start. Obviously, we start off with the with the list of 28 players, but we're actually going to take a shift. We're going to talk a little about Liga MX first, get it out of the way, and then we'll dive right into the list. How we all feel. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a great conversation having Raúl here, having Jason here, um, and 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 we'll definitely dive in. So. Uh, but let's go ahead and Liga and make his final. You know, when, when we were preparing for the show, <laughs> Raul and I were like, I don't really want to talk about Liga and make <laughs> So we'll be honest, but we're going to anyway. So uh, obviously the big news, um, Jason and I uh, uh, triumphantly said, hey, Santos is going to make it. It's going to be the shock uh, because of uh, – Obviously, uh, the first leg, the dominance that Santos had, they wanted more. So let's just go jump right in, and then we'll go into the Cholos, giving it a few minutes. Uh, but uh, Jason, you're confident. You need, you need, you you kind of saw this. You saw what what America did uh, before the game, and, and and tell me a little bit about about why this isn't such, such a surprise. I, I think if you just looked at, I'm mean, obviously Santos, super impressive in the quarterfinals. I mean, you start with that. Um, knocking out the team they knocked out, just looking so good and so relentless in the way they played. And you think if they, if they could bring that, even like 80% of what they had in the corner finals, they bring that to the semifinal, they have a pretty good shot at advancing. And it just seemed like um, America, like they ended the regular season not in their best form. There was a little up and down. And I think there was a bit of fool's school then the way that they came up against Pumas in the quarterfinals. And they looked a little, they looked impressive. But I think Pumas were just kind of a mess, and 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 they were kind of just you know not um, up to par in that quarterfinal. They were just a little underwhelming, and America got past them easily and with help of those red cards as well. So I, I think you know Santos were in a decent position, coming in still kind of like an underdog against that big team America, and in well positioned to outplay them. And I, I think they're just kind of the better team, and, and frankly. Um, and we could get more into this too. Um, definitely out coached. <laughs> Santos, uh, Piojo was out coached um, by, by Santos. So, I mean, the, you, you look at the players on the field and just the tactical approach. And I think Santos had it all in their favor. Well, I think that's where, uh, you know, Piojo obviously with the first game and coming in the second game. But I think, I wouldn't say out coached, but maybe managing the game the right way. I think, and I'll go to Rio Raul coming in. Um, you're up to zero in the second leg. You're at home, and you had to go with that intensity to go out and score, right? Going such forward, Santos holding back, Piojo having these problems of of uh, of managing the situation, and I'll go to you, Cesar, in a minute. Is that to me? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just surprising. Like I just didn't see what Club America was doing out there. It was like just no urgency. It wasn't. It's like not a NBA seven game series. It's two games. It's 180 minutes. Like you need to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. They're just weren't attacking as much as you would imagine for a club being down. I, th I think too. I think what was really most impressive about Santos, like going back to Santos, was the fact that Janini wasn't even entirely yeah. healthy. You know, and I think for I think a big conversation about Santos have been like, well. They've gone this far because of the reliance on Janini doing so well in attack. Well, Janini had some injury problems, and you had players like Julio Furch, 
You had someone like uh, Brian Lozano really step up with some assists. It was Valdo Martinez. It was just really impressive to see because if someone would have told me that Janine was going to be available uh, for the second leg and if he was going to be taken out in the first leg, I would have thought that, yeah, America is going to go through. They have better depth. They're the, uh, I would have thought that they would have been able to do that. But no, I think credit to, especially once again, just Julio Furch for just what he did and how he was able to just uh, find a way past America because I think he was one of the, the, the better players um, in that semifinal series. No, de- and definitely. And it's I, I was kind of looking at that game and just going how just – Entirely, almost America looked in the defense. It looked like there was no defense, and you had all those players from Santos just running circles on them. Uh, it was expected, obviously, th- during the game in in the 180 minutes. But um, I think everybody ate this great America team, the players, what they did to Pumas, and then coming in against the Santos. And we saw, let's not get too carried away. Um, Santos did good throughout the whole season, in, in what we saw there. Uh, finals are going to come up, you know, uh, obviously Santos, but let's go to the other, the other matchup. Cholos. We kind of saw it after that Cholos score two, one, uh, it's tied. Cholos could have had one more goal and could have been a huge surprise against a very good Toluca. Uh, Cesar, uh, obviously you covered Cholos. Tell us how you saw that, that semifinal play out. I mean, that, that first leg, it just looked like Cholos were clearly the better side. I mean, I think they were a little unlucky to not be winning that match uh, three or four or nothing. But instead of what happened is they, they won two to one. I think a lot of people say that the pivotal moment there in that entire series is when Oribe got that uh, that last second. I mean, almost literal last second goal there in the Estado Caliente. But I think what really was the game changer for Tijuana was the two reds for one for Bolaños and one for Quick Mendoza. Because I think Solo still had a fighting chance uh, in that second leg. We could see it after they got that golazo from uh, Luis Chavez. And all they needed after that goal, all they needed was one. That's all they needed, just one more opportunity. But with after earning those two reds, I mean, I mean, Coca had no choice but to play. Basically, he was playing like a 3-4-1, <laughs> which almost looked like a 2-5-1, uh, just because Cholos needed that goal. So, of course, that was going to hurt them. And the Luka scored twice at the end. And I think the Luka were... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess they were... I, I think they were definitely worthy of going up clearly into the final, but I think Cholos fans are still thinking about that first leg and just what could have been if they didn't allow uh, that last second goal. And that was just a bad red card, too. It was just bad. Yeah, it was disappointing, man. It was really disappointing to see that. Ugh. Yeah, that was just... I mean, it was just... From Bolaños, who's been such a... He's been such a key player uh, for Cholos during the last several weeks, and I think he's been kind of the part of the re- like i know just the resurrection the attack he's been the key figure there and it was just it was just so down for him and i and i saw that i think i forgot i forgot i think uh our buddy eugene rupinski who works for uh who does stuff for fms state of mind i think he tweeted out that balance could be suspended for two matches for that awful uh, direct red on rubens i honestly that should be a few more matches i mean that was just it so was reckless it, it was, was awful it was awful yeah yeah, so Sambuesa has a way of bringing it out of people, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's kind of a master. Any, anything around Sambuesa is that way, though. Like, and, and did you guys that, that well, when they were like, "Oh, Sambuesa, I guess some of his own medicine." <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um. All right. Well, final. It feels like we could spend a little more time on it, but we're not going to. <laughs> just, just run in. Final coming up. Uh, of of the Mexican final here, and obviously Santos. And I think very deserved in. And now Toluca, Toluca um, with a team that I feel doesn't get the credit it deserves. I'll say it. I think it's closer to the one of the grandes than all any Nueva Leon, Nuevo Leon team. Um, and if they do end up winning, uh, oh, it's definitely have a talk grande talk again. I'm tired of the I'm grande. just saying. I'm just saying. It's, it's like, it's, oh, Toluca's man. up here. Toluca's there. Toluca wins it. It's and so I feel they're closer. <laughs> uh it, it was just a comment it was just a comment but yeah. all right it's it's I, I know you you don't even you don't even like tweet out about it that much it's 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 the people out there they're the ones it's more so on them everyone who just keeps bringing it up as opposed to you because everyone just constantly well, i think it's it, because yeah. because everybody really wants the, the monterey teams to be there <laughs> and it's yeah. like and then this happens and you're like see this is why but okay well, only we won't go there just for you Cesar. you don't bring up cesar montes and i won't bring up the grandes talk not deal. Not deal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, so let's talk about the final. What happens? What, what do you see happening in this final? Do you see uh, Santos continuing? How many good teams do they have to beat before they get the credit and become? Then they're not the underdogs. 
I say I say the Lucas winning. I think I think the Lucas gonna win it. <laughs> there it is, <laughs> the Luca Jason. Oh, I don't know. This is a tough one. Um, I could see it going either way, um, and it's kind of copping out here. But um, I, to Luca, I've never really trusted this season, but they just keep mm-hmm. plugging along. And yeah. <laughs> I think oh, Jason, did, you there? Did we Might have. Jason? I think we lost Jason. <laughs> All right, we'll go. Hopefully, you can come back, Cesar. Uh, yeah, man, I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be very, very close. But I think the Luka is just such a well-balanced team. They have a lot of uh, veterans there uh, that they rely on who I think have a lot of experience. Uh, I think so. having someone like Dalavet and Net is massive. And I think that's something that, sh- that shouldn't be overlooked. I know he's not the Mexican goalkeeper that we're talking about you know, that often. Of course, we mm-hmm. always discuss mm-hmm. Ochoa. But I think Dalavet, I think he's done a decent job bouncing back after that really serious injury. So, And of course, you have the... I mean, you, you have the some West of wild card. I mean, it could really, yeah. it, it, could, it could hurt the Luca. It could really help them out. But I think after what he did in that, that second leg against Cholos was just, it was, I mean, it was, it was fantastic. It was, it was entertaining. And I think that, I mean, once again, the some West of wild card, I think it'll, it'll help the Luca. And it's just so crazy that some West after being with America for what, four years, and now they're knocked out. And now he's what, he's 34 years old, and he's going to be potentially lifting a, a league title uh, with the Luca. But that'd be pretty. I mean, I think that'd be kind of cool to see this like League of Mackey's villain doing that. <laughs> he had the game he had it was just crazy. He had five key passes, one assist, and then he got fouled eight times. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, you got you got cut off. Yeah. saying that you were. It's a cop out saying that you didn't know who was going to win. And I still don't. After all that time. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you had so much time. It's so I know. Time. Is that is that a Toluca Toluca uh, scarf behind you? I think it sure is. Yeah, I, I got a Celtic one here because I can't. I can't. I don't have a Santos one, so that's pretty close. But anyway. Um, oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah, but um, I, I don't know. I, I I don't trust Toluca completely. I haven't all season, but thirteen goals allowed in seventeen matches. Um, they just they keep proving me wrong, and and they're 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 a tough one. But I'm still gonna stick with Santos. I think. I don't feel completely comfortable and uh, confident in it, but um, I just like the way they're playing. And um, it, it worries me a little bit having that second leg in Toluca. Um, but I think Santos are going to be able to pull it out. I think they just have something clicking right now that is just one of those magical runs. And I'm, I'm, I'm banking on them continuing it into the final. I might change my answer because Jason has so far been spot on with his predictions. So it, I, I'm, I'm rooting for Santos now. <laughs> Twenty dollars on Santos. I'm gonna go with Santos. Also, I I, I think finally they, they've proven, and I don't think they're gonna let the gas off and continue to do that. I think the the, the team is playing with such garra and heart, and you see that with the players. Yeah, uh, I'll, I kind of mimic you. It's careful, but I think it's gonna definitely gonna be close. Definitely gonna be close. But I see. Uh, Santos lifting the trophy and uh, I think very well deserved and uh, we'll be congratulating our friend uh, Kim Tate there in uh, in Santos so hopefully if you're watching Kim I know that uh, it's never ragging coming up this week all right tell us who uh, all in the chat everybody there's a lot of people talking saying hi to IBM B the Miguel Angel Phil Gary Torres tell us who's gonna win between Toluca and Santos, La Comarca Lagunera in Torreón. All right, let's jump over to the topic I'm sure everybody's been waiting for. World Cup uh, 2019. The- Hopefully, we'll see if San Diego can get a venue. <laughs> I think there's a test of time. So. No uh, <laughs> we got uh, World Cup roster was released this morning, 9 a.m. for those of you Pacific. Um, and uh, it was definitely going to be something that I think we've all been kind of waiting for over the week. Was it going to be 35 players? Was it going to be 23 players, 28? Um, Tom was uh, able to tell us last week that he that Juan Carlos Osorio was ready to name his 23-player squad. But obviously over the weekend and uh, throughout the week, um, you saw five key injuries that forced him to name 28 players. So really quick, I know we are going to talk about all of the players that are not there. Um, but I think most importantly, if we have to discuss something, is the alarms going off that we have five key players that maybe not the Dos Santos being so key, but at least one player like Guardado, who as of now is going to have an, uh, is flying back to Mexico for a, a surgery and I think could be out at least two weeks 
when before you can start training. I think that's probably the biggest story out of all this. I know we're talking about 23 years, but injuries, injuries continue to haunt this Mexican national team. And although they're not, uh, they're not for sure. And you know, summer ending, World Cup ending injuries, it's kind of concerning in that in that sense. So uh, let's talk about that as far, and we'll go into the players. But Cesar, to you, not having a guardado ready for the World Cup against Germany. I don't think there's another player that we can think of that has to be at that game. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I I personally am a big fan of Guardado. I think uh, as a fan of El Tri, I would say that he's probably my favorite player uh, on the national team, and uh, he's a team captain. I would genuinely be very, very worried. I mean, we still have to see how he bounces back uh, from that surgery he's going to have. I mean, it seems like there's just still so many questions regarding it, uh, but hopefully he does recover very quickly because he is such a crucial I mean, component for, for not only just nationally, but we've seen that with this season with uh, Real Betis. I mean, mm-hmm. half the re- I'm not going to say half the reason, but like part of the reason that they were able to secure a, a Europa League spot was because Guardado was doing very well with them. I mean, the manager for Real, Real Betis, ever, he said that Guardado is the best player he's ever coached. This is a guy who's coaching Europa League team in Spain. That's saying a lot. So I do hope that Guardado bounces back because once again, he's Mexico's team captain. I do hope that uh, I know he's healthy in time for that first game uh, against Germany. Yeah, just how important five foot three Guardado is to this national team <laughs> is 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 just you know it's how we sell. All right, Jason. <laughs> I think it's close to my. I think it's close to my height, no, he, so he's probably four, four, five. I guess four, five, four. Um, aside from the injuries, you have Reyes, who's who's not a hundred percent. Obviously, Araujo, who although doing well, right, training now with the team, those three. But then you have the Santos brothers, who are uh, also injured um, over the weekend. Uh, Gio not playing. Uh, and Jonathan being summed out in the middle. And because of that, it gave you that 28-man roster. I heard in the in an interview today with Juan Carlos Osorio that they asked him, um, you know, what who are your other players? What are what, what about the other seven that um, you know that you gave to FIFA for 35 players? And something that he mentioned was really important. He said in the rules, it's up to 35 player list. And that he talked to Bielsa, he talked to Gus Hitting, he talked to Aguirre, who said, you know what? Don't call out anybody, you know, that you're definitely not going to see on the field. Yeah. And it looks like he only gave 28 players to this list. Jason, to you, this is not surprising. We've known this, that Juan Carlos Osorio said before, that he's got his starting 11 against Germany already. Right. No, yeah, it's not surprising. And I, I agree with that. I mean, if you don't have to name players that are just eventually going to be the ones that are going to cut and not really in consideration, I think that's a great thing to do. Now, we could we – could, like tear apart this list and, and point out some of the players and some of the ones that should be there and shouldn't be there, which certainly we're going to get into. But I mean, I like this approach of giving 28, get, keeping it as narrow as you can. Um, again, not totally agreeing with the players, but with the number and, and having this approach, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I, I you know, there, there's enough there that with the injuries that uh, there are players to be considered if some of these players have some nagging things and they need replacements or just, you know, you need to have a backups because there's still some lingering stuff. I, I think there's enough players in this list where it's not too light um, that, you know, it's good you don't have players that just aren't in consideration. Definitely. All right, well, let's jump right into that list. Uh, you saw it. You saw those players. Um, how would you grade this list? At a scale, in a scale of 1 to 10, we've seen World Cup rosters come out. I mean... You, I'm sure you remember 2006, 2010, 2014 of players that are definitely not in. To you, is it that big of a deal that a Pizarro and Gallito Vasquez and let's say, you know, other players aren't there? Is this, you know, the end of the world? Because I see those players that are probably not even going to play anyways. I, I don't know. I'm not freaking out. That's what I'm saying. Raul, give us your take on and grading this list that you saw come out 28 players. Um, not surprising. I mean, like you guys have all talked about, it's, I mean, we can nitpick a player here or there, but yeah. uh, but I do disagree with you, Viso, in saying, oh, these guys aren't going to play. I mean, Mexico, it's a solo, so you have to yeah. assume the <laughs> I guess you're right. Play. My bad. <laughs> yeah, they are going to play. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, like we, I know everyone, the hot take is Pizarro. And, okay, I'll give you Pizarro, but it's like one or two players. Is Pizarro going to start? No. Would he, I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, I would have taken Pizarro over some other players, but it's not like I'm saying – Oh, Pizarro's gonna start for me, and now he's not even gonna be called up. You know? 
So I'll give just, it a seven and a half. Let's go with seven and a half, eight. Ooh, I'm just glad that we're having this conversation about players who might not even get any playing time in the World Cup. Like, that's the big talking mm -hmm. point. It's nothing to do with the guys who are probably going to start. It's like, oh, it's Bizarro or Drew. Like, oh, I mean, I know we we're saying that, like, I mean, would it be surprised if, let's say, uh, let's say in the South Korea game, you know, that uh, Osorio you know, puts in a couple of backups. But I wouldn't be surprised if either Gio or if Bizarro were to get the call, if Bizarro were to get no minutes, you know? I, I, think, I think I'm think i glad that we're that it's uh that the big talking point is about a player who might not even get any minutes. So I also I, I mean I would if I was to give this uh, a rating, I would say it's a honestly it's a it's a nine. I mean uh, I think Gallito, I mean maybe Bizarro, maybe, uh, maybe those two guys I could see, you know maybe them in the roster, but I'm not I'm not bothered by it. I think Mexico can get the job done with this roster. I think every anybody that's bothered maybe really thought Pizarro was going to be there. I've already said that Pizarro wasn't like it's already in my mind that Pizarro wasn't going to be there. Maybe that's why it wasn't like a huge shock. If Layun didn't make it, that's a huge shock. <laughs> you know, if if a player, someone like that, and I think maybe that's why I'm not so bothered. I can see the argument about doing it. Uh, I mean, I, I, when I look at it, like I'm more like a, a six or so. I mean, oh, I think, oh. yeah, I, I don't think there are surprises here, but there's disappointments. I mean, like, especially when you start going through this roster and you're thinking about, like, who are the players? When you start thinking about that, you know, you've got to knock five players off this list. And you have these players that I'm starting to think because of their inclusion, they're probably not even going to get knocked off that list. Like, Rafa Marquez is not going to be a player who's who's knocked off before the World Cup, right? He's going to the World Cup if he's on yeah. this list. Yeah. And, and this is a player that, I mean – you just don't want to play. I mean, like, let, let's be honest about what Rafa Marquez is at this point. If you're bringing him for his leadership, he's not someone you want to necessarily put on the field because he's a liability. You have someone like Giovanni De Santos. Again, not someone we want to see on the field. He's a liability at this point. I mean, it has nothing to do with him playing in MLS. It has, some, it has everything to do with the manner in which he's playing and the style of his play and just the, the level of his play. Um, Jurgen Damm. I mean, not surprising he's on this roster, not surprising he's likely to be going to the World Cup, but this is another player that at this point just cannot have on the field for Mexico. If he is your sub coming onto the field, it's a disappointment because someone else should be coming on, like like a Pizarro who can actually make a difference, someone who can complete a pass. Now, like, I'm being overly critical on these people, but, I mean, this is several players where you think – these are disappointments on this roster and you don't necessarily like all these players. Like, I'm just like, Oh man, if they have to be on the field, Mexico's in a bit of trouble because they're going to be overmatched. And I, I think it's problematic. And um, I, I don't know. I, that, that's, that's the troubling thing about this roster to me overall. Like I said, not necessarily surprising, but those are disappointments because I think that's where somewhere like, like a bizarro could, could be like a, a, a seriously impactful sub. And I think there, and, and as you guys mentioned, with Osario, there's going to be a decent amount of rotation. A lot of these players are going to see playing time. And I'm afraid at this point that players like I mentioned, Gio, Jurgen Dom, Rafa Marquez are going to see playing time. And that kind of scares me. I think I'm still cautiously optimistic just because I assume someone like Jurgen Dam is probably dropped from the roster. I assume that there's a chance that maybe Gio might not be there. I, I think maybe that's what I, I'm not saying because those guys aren't going to be there, but maybe I'm still feeling cautious optimistic because I still haven't seen the final 23. Maybe I'm saving my anger for that final 23. And maybe there's and there's also a part, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, there's just a... Uh, with the Rafa thing, I mean, just something over the last couple of weeks, I, I have wanted him far away from the national team and somehow something just clicked in my mind. I'm s saying this from like a fan perspective, uh, but something just clicked my mind where I just like, like, I don't know. I just felt very ro romantic about it. I'm like, yes, Rafa does deserve to go. Yes. Let's see. I don't know. Something just like, I have no idea how that happened, but now for whatever reason, I'm excited to see Rafa at the world cup. I know I shouldn't be, I know I don't want him on the field, but now for, for whatever reason, I'm now, happy about it i don't i don't I mean, just, maybe just from that Mex it's just from that pure mexican national team fan perspective but i don't know it, it, it's it's weird because for once i was saying that i didn't want rafa uh, in mexico's roster but for whatever reason i think it's just be I, it's probably just because i just want him to go to one more world cup and even and that's just completely blinding me from the fact that if he does step onto the field we might lose a match but but yeah i don't know uh, something that just came to mind right now i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go around the six if I really want to be, uh, you know, positive, maybe like a six and a half. If I'm like, oh, I can't believe these players aren't there. I'm, I'm with you, kind of there, Jason. Um, I think 
No, I'm going to go seven because those players that we mentioned, I don't think they're going to be that big of a deal. And, and he has, I don't think there was not a single player that had to be there. But I obviously, if I'm the coach, these are the players that I'm taking, right? Yes, a Pizarro, who has been doing amazing things with Chivas, CONCACAF champions. Um, you know, I, I would even go with, um, you know, obviously the guy Ito Vasquez coming from Leon, what I saw, what he did 2014, what he's doing now, going to be playing a final. Um, it's there. Right, but those are the teams that I, I'm, I'm looking. Just kind of an overall. Here are my these. This person's better than this person, and I think that's what all of, all of the fans were doing. Right, Pizarro is better than than Gio right now, just hands down. Uh, I would say Gaito Vasquez is better at defensive mid than than Molina, so I'm going to take him over. But this is where I I I kind of step back and look at Osorio. It's his team, and there isn't a player that he doesn't have an answer for on why he picked them. He's not afraid of telling you, this is why I didn't take Pizarro. He may be wrong, right? But the, at least he says, Pizarro plays like this in Chivas. He played like this for me in the national team in the Gold Cup, and he didn't make a difference. He played in the last game, and he didn't make a difference. And the way that I need him to play is behind the nine. He can't be, you know, uh, that player on the wings. He has to be a playmaker in this sense, and he doesn't see it. He's got a spot. He, you know, he's taking Herrera. He's taking... Um, Vela spot in that sense, and he's looking at those three. Marco Fabian is competing, and yes, even Gio's competing against him. He's saying, out of those four, Pizarro, he's number five to me, so he's taking him out. You know, Orgaito Vasquez, one of the big things is his height. I mean, he's come out and said, I have five guys like Vela, like Chucky, like Gio, like all these guys up front, Tecatito, Guardado, who are nowhere near in the that play in the air. It could be because of their height or whatever. And I'm going to bring in yet another player that has no aerial game like Gallito. I'm going to go with Molina because of that. Yes, it's because of his height, but he's saying he wants somebody there that's a little bit taller as his, two, as his second contención and whoever is bringing it. I, don't, I may not agree with it, but... One thing I like is that he's giving his explanation on the system rather than, you know, who's better than the other person. So I mean, it, we, it's it, – and I don't know. You just kind of get applaud that, that he's got at least a mentality that that he – you know, a reason for him to, to take somebody like that. No, you speak of mentality. I mean, we talk about the mentality of the national team a lot. We talk about – you know how Mexico just needs that little extra push right there. I mean, to make it to the quinto partida. I mean, and I mean, in starting this month, I mean, that group of players are going to be spending twenty four seven. They're going to be hanging out twenty four seven for the next several weeks. And and I think that if you're thinking about the chemistry of the team, if you're thinking about the cohesion of the team, and if you think that if adding Pizarro could potentially disrupt that, if bringing in Gio could kind of keep that happiness within the roster, I'm not saying that I would do that, but I, I guess I understand it because I think there's just so much more than what's yeah. just happening in the field. And I think it just, and, and I, 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 and I, I think there's just, I think it seems like there's just so much more than just Pizarro being a good player. Therefore, Mexico should, that Osorio should take him to the World Cup. It just, it does seem like there's something deeper here. And it does seem that like if you were to leave Joe out, how would that affect Joe? And how would that affect that core group of players? Because you know that core group of players, like you know, when you see the player, you see Jimenez, you see Tecatito, you see Wilson, you see that they're all clearly good friends. And if you leave someone like Joe out, how does that affect the team? Has that affect that mentality? And I, I think I think there's just so much more to it than just this guy's good, this guy's bad, drop him. Well, this guy's good, this no, guy's I, bad. I agree with that. I agree with that completely. And I mean, you can't have a roster that's necessarily the best 23 players in Mexico. You have to make a team yeah. and you have to make it work. But at the same time, I, I still like the thing that concerns me is the number of players that just feel like excess baggage yeah. kind of players there for that kind of thing and not necessarily there for on field contribution. But like, the, that, Osorio that's says my they concern. Though. Osorio says that Abolina okay, is going to do a better but again, job. Going back to what you said, Lisa, he has all his reasons, right? And like this goes back several years, and this was my main criticism with the story all the time. I very much appreciate that he is someone that can dictate all his reasons, right? He can give you his reasons. He can he he presents himself as a student of the game. He can explain things very well. But sometimes you can explain things very well and have reasons, and all those reasons are very wrong. I mean, yep. his height thing is True. just, it's just plain wrong. Like, I, I'm yes. sorry. Like, I understand the, the theory behind it. I understand the basis, but I just vehemently disagree with it. And I, I don't think that's the correct approach you should take in this kind of situation. So, and it's the same kind of thing with, 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 with this roster thing. I, I think there are too many players that just aren't going to be contributing players. And I, I get the theory behind it, but I think as a manager, you have to kind of get that group together and, and make it work. 
um, and not necessarily rely on all these players who aren't necessarily going to contribute on the field. And he might say they're going to contribute on the field, but based on what we have seen, they are absolutely not going to contribute on the field. I don't think... Just, just wait till we make it to the Quinto Partido. It's happening. It's happening. I feel it. And now's our time, Jason. Now's with, a, time. with a goal from Molina header off a corner kick. Giovanni Dos Santos' <laughs> bicycle <laughs> kick. Dude, I'm telling you. Jurgen Dam will set it in the, in the cross, really, right? Yeah. Jurgen Dam cross to deal bicycle kick, blah, and then Molina heads it in after like a, a, a huge save from, from nowhere. <laughs> no, um, I get it. I, I it's... I think it comes down to his height, and I get that, Gallito. And I think somebody, Cari uh, Torres on the chat, said that, uh, I mean, if it was his height, if it was height, there's uh, there's people like like uh, Aquino who's smaller than, than Gallito. I think I think even Guardado might be there, too. Um, I think specifically for that position. Positional height, yeah. I mean, I think just for that position. There's a reason why. I mean, you have taller defenders, right? Um, there was a time when we did take really small defenders. I mean, Paolo Aguilar isn't really tall, but it, it was totally not used as a wing. defender either. But. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you're right. Not even a defender. <laughs> but I, in, and everyone goes back. So if we had a Messi, you wouldn't take him. Or if we had, you know, these players, I really don't. I mean, if we had a Messi, if we had that quali quality of a team, then you build the team around the, those great yeah. players. I, I hate that comparison. If you have, you know, these smaller, it's not necessarily because Gallito is, is short. It's, and yes and no, it's because, he, you know, Osorio sees that Molina offers something that he doesn't. That's it. And I think it comes down to it. I want Gallito there. I've been saying, heck, I want Luis Montes still there, okay? So that that's my, mm -hmm. you know, I want those guys there. I think they play great together. I, I, won't, I won't even mention Gulit, but we'll, we'll do that, right? Um, so... He, I think the the injury is the bigger problem, and everyone's making a big yeah. deal about those. I, I feel I I'm like that's that's what we really should be focused on. That's what we should be talking about is the fact that I very very well could see it. You uh, one dos Santos, and I've been saying it for a while that you take one or the other. But I think because of injuries, one of those dos Santos is not going to go to the World Cup because of injury. No, I do agree that that's the thing that we're, and I tweeted that out too. And the Guardado thing, I think even that alone worries me more than any conversation about Bizarro or Jew or any, that that stuff doesn't matter. But what really matters is that Guardado goes in there healthy. Because we're talking about a starter here. We're talking about the team captain. So I do hope that, uh, I do hope that Guardado gets a healthy time. It looks like he's supposed to recover, like, before the World Cup, but I mean, you never know with these kinds of things. We're not doctors; we have no idea. So we're hope. I mean, keep my fingers crossed that he does actually heal in time. <laughs> I gotta mention on the chat, Senor Bautista said, "We saw Jersey so fake. This video is about to get flagged." <laughs> 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 Guys, I got this outside the stadium. It was raining. It was it was four dollars <laughs> outside outside the Azteca. Wait, this is like two years ago too. This wasn't even when it was named, so they were already selling it. It was hilarious. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden Adidas trademarks this and we get flagged for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten my new one yet. I'm, I'm still waiting. So we'll, we'll wait for that. Um, all right. Well, yes, injuries. Definitely, definitely there. Um, let's talk about the positives. And I was trying to bring something positive in. Um, and I, I started kind of doing some research, reading some notes here and there. But this roster, and we've never had this before. Or by the way, Raul kind of took off. Hopefully, he was coming back in. Um, but uh, but this is one of the most experienced rosters in a World Cup since I think we can go back to like the '60s, the Campionissimo era, taking 15, 16 players that have ha have already played in a World Cup, and I think that's huge. Um, yep. You can go about it. Oh well, you know there aren't any young players or maybe the future of this, this is their last call up, but the average age of this world cup, at least at 28, uh, the 28 called is 28. It's not a very young squad. It's not a very old squad. You, you have your, you have your Rafa Marquez, but I think what's, who's the youngest player at 20. Guti, right? Mm, at 22? It'd, probably be, it'd be probably Gutierrez. Yeah. Yeah. At 22. Yeah. Or, average, or, or Edson. Yeah. Or Edson probably. Actually, probably Edson Alvarez. Edson Alvarez. The average age is 28. 15, 16 of these players, 15 from 2014, 16 counting Carlos Vela because he was in 2010, have already played in a World Cup. If you go from the 2010 to 2014, only about, I think, eight players. From 20, 2006 to 2010, 
uh, I think eight or six, seven, six or seven players from 2002, 2004, six players are returning to the World Cup. But this year is 15. And I think that's huge. Uh, that yeah. generation of players that are going to have that, you know, that ex that that level of of being comfortable on the pitch and playing in the world. And if I look at the others that didn't get that um, – that, that don't have a World Cup experience, the Araujos, Jonathan Dos Santos, Tecatito, I don't think they're gonna their feet are gonna tremble because they're you know they're they're debuting in a World Cup. You do hope that some of these players are a little motivated, uh, knowing that this might be their last World Cup, and a lot of these players that I'm talking, I mean, it could be, I mean, once again, they could potentially play in the next World Cup, but you're looking at players who are in their late twenties slash early thirties, and I'm talking about. I mean, Ochoa, I'm talking about Vela, I'm talking about Chicharito, uh, Guardado, Herrera, Jonathan Dos Santos. I guess he's a little bit younger right there, but Moreno, uh, Layun. These guys aren't in their early 20s. They're at the prime of their career. A lot of these guys, they're playing in Europe as well. So it's, it is, when you look at the 11 from Mexico, you do see a core group of players who've been playing for a while. Mm -hmm. You do see a core group of players who are at the prime of their career, who this might be their last World Cup as well. So I do... I, I, I feel very positive about that. I feel qu quite happy with that. And I'm also excited about potentially, you know, seeing starting 11s that are made up of just mostly players who are playing in Europe, which is kind of, I, I think that's very exciting. I think it's very, very exciting. Um, Jason, I know, try to, what, what's the positive? Let's try to find some positives in this. In, in, well, in like the I mentioned, that in some, some of the younger players, like Gutierrez in there, Edson Alvarez. I mean, these are players that, I mean, still to be determined whether in that final 23, um, two players that could potentially be in the five that could drop off. But positive to see them there. I think Gutierrez was the one surprise for me. I didn't expect him to be on this list, even with the expanded list. Um, him not being included in recent rosters, so that was a shock to me, but a good one. Uh, one I, a player I definitely wanted to see in the roster, at least in contention for a spot. And with this um, Guardado, uh, possible injury. Yeah, that's someone that might be have a, a stronger role, a bigger role uh, moving forward. At least you know you imagine even in the interim, the short term, maybe he's someone that steps in into that role to be Guardado mm -hmm. and just the the practice in the training sessions of being Guardado possibly um, to the impact that could have for him. Just mixing with with that core group um, is really important uh, for the future, I, especially even if it's not for this World Cup. I you know. think that. You know, the Gutierrez call-up was exactly because of Guardado not being there. If you look at Jonathan Dos Santos being injured, Guardado being injured, I think he was like, who else do we have that we can try to bring in that that role that they they play? And I think that's where that came in. I don't believe if if Guardado was – was um, I think that's one of the guys that he goes, crap, I got to add five more because of injuries. Yeah. And he looked at all the injured players, right? And he said, okay, Reyes – who do we have? I think for Guardado, he put in Gutierrez as a young person that can actually do that role. Not as good, but at the same time, I think you can give him that. Yeah. And, and I mean, we can even do that right now. If you look, what are the who are the five? And and I think we can see the twenty three that are coming. If all the twenty, if 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 the five were were uh, were made up because of injuries, right? So you have you have Reyes. Who's who's the defender that he called that? Um, because of Reyes being injured, I think that with Reyes, I mean, or, I think he, he just already had mid. If he's playing that defensive mid up front, I don't, I don't think with Reyes he needed to call anyone extra. I think he had his usual guys right there. I think you have a, uh, you've got the depth right there. Whether it be uh, Araujo, whether it be Ayala, whether it be Edson Alvarez, you could say Carlos Salcedo too if he needs to move in there. So I don't think he needed to call anyone extra uh, for there. But I do agree that yeah, with the with the Guardado injury. Uh, and with uh, those Santos injury, you can say Gio too. They just they probably did, he did probably see Gutierrez as a decent option uh, right there. Uh, but but yeah, I wouldn't be. But at, at the same time, I, I I like the fact that Gutierrez is there as well. But I wouldn't be surprised if he was one of the five that's cut. I think when I look at the five that are going to be cut, he's he's one of the first names uh, that that come to mind for me. The. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at, it and, and and I guess so. That's what we can do. That was on our next thing to kind of look at the uh, at the five that weren't going to be there. But keepers, those three are there. I don't think there's a discussion. I would have taken Cota yeah. just over maybe Corona. Just hey, give get get him ready. Um, no, those three are fine, man. Those, I'm no, happy no, I, it, no. Usually you take a third that I that you know. Let's get him into this. You know how it goes, and it's gone to the World Cup. Corona's yeah. not going to play, and that's yeah. that's the only reason why. Sometimes you just 
You're not going to say Corona. Corona never. never. Juan Carlos Osorio. Ochoa plays Germany. Corona plays against Korea. And Talavera plays against you Sweden. Can't rule it You're out. right. You're right. If, if, if and, and that's how we're at. Um, I've seen images of Chicharito training uh, as a goalkeeper. Don't don't rule that out for uh, the game against Germany. What that will too? I think he, uh, he he puts on the gloves that are, that are there. Um, but okay, let's let's look at the the last twenty three. What are the five that gets? And everyone on the chat, stop what you're doing. I want to hear all your. Uh, I want I want you guys to type out. So all MJP, MV twenty three, Luis Martinez, Angel, Gary, type out your five that don't make it. And let's make it interesting. Type out the five that you don't want to make it, and type out the five that Osorio is gonna is uh, is gonna cut. So that is your job right here on the chat. Um, and, and the five you'd like to interview, the five you'd like to take out on a date, the five <laughs> that you would love to go get dinner with soon. <laughs> if you could five. pick one player to go out and get dinner with, who would it be? I don't know, whoever has the most money, so they're paying for it. I don't know. Let me, give you, let me give you my five. All right, all right. go for it, Jason. Go okay, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just to cut Cesar up before that gets weird. Your, your top five. <laughs> all right, so my five. This, these, these are the ones not that I predict will be going home. But these are yours. If I, was, if I was to pick, here are my five. Um, so I'm sending um, Gio, obviously. Um, I'm sending Rafa Marquez, and I'm sending Jurgen Dam. The, the three that I highlighted earlier. If those three are gone, I... I I reluctantly send Arrive home. I'd love to keep him, but I think there's just too many options there. I mean, Cheech and Ra and uh, Raul are the, the the main strikers, but you just have so many players that could play in a striker type role um, that you don't really need um, more than two f straight out, out and out forwards. I don't think so. I, I'd send Arrive, and then it comes down to the last spot, either Alanis or Ayala. I'd probably send Alanis home and keep Ayala there. So uh, Alanis, Gio, Rafa. Jurgen Dom and Aribe would be my five to go home. Aribe with the surprise. For yeah, you. I just there's just too many too many options for me. I, I just like I, I don't see him really playing, and I, I'd rather have more backups um, for injury in the defense. I think so. Keep a, a few more defenders around. Um, so that's why I went with Aribe, but that was a tough one. Okay. Cesar. Uh, yeah, I'm also reluctant to, to take out Oribe, but I think that if Chicharito's injured, if Jimenez is injured, I don't know, man, just go, go with the false nine there. I don't, I don't know if I really trust Oribe, especially after the current season. Jurgen Dam, because I also agree that, I mean, just Osorio seems to be a very big fan of him, but I am not a fan of Jurgen Dam. Uh, Molina, I just don't know. I, I'm just I'm convinced we'll even get minutes. I, I don't know. It just seems I, I'm not exactly been convinced by him. So no Molina. Same thing with uh, Gutierrez. I, I appreciate his playing capabilities. I think that he's a good leader. I, I like the fact that he is a he's a, been a team captain for Pachuca. But I I don't know. I don't know if I would trust him on a stage like the the World Cup. And then Alanis because I don't know. Not exactly the biggest Alanis fan. I think the defense could still get the job done. Uh, without him there. So I would say, yeah, Oribe, Dan, Molina, Gutierrez, and Alaris. All right. Um, my my five, I I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it, I'll, I'll go against you guys on the Peralta. I feel like Peralta is, is going gonna, is gonna to go. Um, I know that he may not bring a lot, but... I, I, well, it's not... I, I thought it was what, if we were the ones in charge. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's oh, what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm okay, going to keep okay. it out there. So okay. I'm actually going to go... I'm going to go with them. I don't think we need them at all. Um, at all. Like, there's really nothing unless... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying this to figure out... I really hope he's not listening to tonight's show. Because... And we're like... And it's going to go to penalty he... kicks, and he may go in there and, like... I don't know. We boot the ball, and he needs to get there from point A from B. He but, seems like a he seems like a likable guy, but yeah, yeah, no. yeah. He seems like a really cool guy. He speaks English very, very smart, from what Tom tells us. And um, I, people aren't gonna like this, but I wouldn't take Aquino. Ooh, I don't like that. I know. I just I feel that that there there's three players that can do what he can do. Um, I don't, and I don't think I want to play him at all. Um, and. He's too short. No, no, not, 
I don't know, but I just I just feel like I, yeah, he's very very talented. And I think if I was Osorio, I would be like, oh, you're bringing Gio instead of Aquino. Like that would be my move. People would criticize me not because I brought in Pizarro. I like I would take out. I I just I would take out Aquino, um, uh, in 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 who he has. So Tecatito on that side. Um, you can move Bella to the other side. Um, I don't know. I just I feel like Aquino was not. I wouldn't get that much playing time in my in mind. Then we're going kind of what everybody said. Um, Molina, um, yeah, he is his height, but I I feel like he, I think he's still going to go if everybody's healthy, right? If the Jonathan, if Herrera, if um, if Guardado, I don't think Molina is is needed in that sense because Reyes is going to come up and take that height or de- defensive mid if in that in, in that in. Um, yeah, I know you guys like. Alanis, I mean Ayala over Alanis. I think it's a preference. I, I, I like. Um, I'm not gonna say I like. I, I'm a big fan of either of them. I would yeah. just prefer Ayala. Oh, over Al- oh I, I would go the other way. I would go with Alanis. Flip a coin. Um, yeah, I would go with with <laughs> Alanis. And then ultimately, I think I'm with you guys on you know Guti. There's really nobody else you want to take out. I mean, I, I would love the kid, and I think it'd be great to for him to get access. But if everybody's healthy, sorry Guti, I don't think there's anybody that you, that you kick off. You guys put Gio. Did you put Gio Cesar on that? No, I didn't put you. Yeah, and here's my thing with Gio. I feel like Gio is only good for one thing, and national team. And in the moments that we need him the most, he, all of a sudden he does something that reminds you of the Gio in 2011, the Gio in 2014, the Gio of 2005. Um, that's that's what I'd bring. And if his brother is there and they're both happy and Ed- Edson's in the locker room, I mean, Evan, I just feel Gio has something there, and I'm not going to let him go. I know. I know, but it obviously Pizarro's better. Um, but I can I see why they, they bring in the Gio. And yeah, he shouldn't have gone to MLS and all that. But I'm gonna predict Gio scores one goal, and I don't want to see you guys celebrating at all. Nobody, right? Um, he's, in, but, he's in my 23. He's in my yeah, 23. Yeah, Cesar, we'll, Jason, we'll, we'll, Jason, you're, Jason, you're, Jason, you're, 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 Jason, you're not allowed to. You can't say you, you have to like boo. You have to put like like thumbs okay. down when it happens. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm telling you, I. Just, I was there 2011, right? I, I saw that like goal take t- a minute to get to it, and and, and that, and then that, and I was there in 2014 against uh, against Holanda when he scored that golazo. Like I was probably better to bring up 2014 than 2011 because so we we can't ago. be like I was there. I know, I know. Why did why did we call up Jesus Zavala, man? I was there 2011. It's it's. <laughs> Wait, what do you do? no, 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 I'm just saying, you, you remember these things from Gio when he puts on and he's at these huge stages in 2005. I feel like not taking it, like after this World Cup, I'm going to give it one more. I know nobody likes that, but I feel I mean, like I Gio's going to do something. I don't think Gio's going to do anything. I think if we have two roster spots reserved just for, just for like roster happiness, harmony, composure, and <laughs> you like bring attitude, I'm, br- I'm bringing Rafa and I'm bringing Gio. Uh, I get Can to, we get I, them like coaching roles, maybe then, like and just have big players? Like, no, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Like, I'll, like talk to Joe and be like, "Hey, man, you're not going to see a single minute of play, but just like we're going to bring, we're, it's, you got to keep the composure of the team. You got to make everyone happy. Like, ninety percent of the time is going to be spent in hotels playing Mario Kart. Ten percent of the time is going to be spent like actually playing soccer. So, just bring Gio, keep everyone happy." Look. I, on the chat, I'm getting crucified. Uh, we saw like Chepo starting 90 year old Salcido on the midfield in the World Cup qualifying. <laughs> like, I get it. I get it. Um, just, I think that's just the fan in me. And, and I'll be honest, because I think like five, five, five Mexican soccer shows, I said Gio's done. <laughs> I was getting mad at what he did. Um, so, no, I get it. I get it. I think and everybody has a preference and definitely warranted that Pizarro should be there over players like Gio or. Um, you, you know, players like Ayuto Vasquez over Molina. And I think that's why everybody has fans. But I remember being completely angry in 2006 when Cuauhtémoc Blanco wasn't going and Chiquis Garcia has made the spot. Like, that's like a throw, like, that's, thing that on crazy. your... That yeah, one's like, crazy. That, yeah, that that's one's like crazy. a throw, you know, the, the furniture and go run a mile outside because you were so angry that, uh, you know, Ricardo Lavolpe, who arguably was... People say it's one of the best teams that has ever put on El Tri in, in you know, like Confederations Cup and then going to down the six. Like, that was bad. But you knew it was coming because of the relationship. You saw that. So, I don't know. Um, we'll get there. So, uh, interesting enough, uh, we'll see with the final 23. Again, Osorio has already said he knows the starting 11. If everybody is healthy, he already knows what's going to be completely different than the starting 11 from Korea. But... Um, we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes, but what else guys, um, what do we look forward to? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jason. 
you want to quick try to predict the actual five we think Osiris yeah. is going to be? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think, I I think it's... I don't know about you guys, but like, I have a really hard time with it. Uh, a few that I, I think are definitely uh, going to be on the list, I, I would say probably... Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I really want to... I mean, I, I, I just assume it will be on Osorio's list until eternity. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna say Molina. I'm going to say Alanis. I'm going to say Guti. Um, after that, it gets hard for me. I think those three are my obvious if ones. If everybody's then, healthy. If everyone's and healthy. I think, um, and I think that's I where think, it's going to be. I think he's going to be that, forced to take players because of – because um, if Gio doesn't make it, it's because he's not healthy. I th- see, That's why I'm going to put Gio on that list because I think his injury might be used as a scapegoat to leave him home. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's the out for Osorio is that he has some sort of a lingering. He's not quite 100%, so that's the excuse to leave him home. Possibly, and honestly, he was even... there last week talking to them. True. So I mean, and, I, and, I don't know. And, he, and, and if he wasn't going to take him, he wouldn't have put him on the list. I know people I, are talking. I, I, I know people talking about you know. Well, you're going to take, you're going to take the the players with you can film the most commercial, the most marketable players, and that's the FMF and you know money, 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 money. If that was the case, Rafa Marquez would not be on this on this roster. No, I, I don't think Astorio like bends to that kind of stuff. I, that's I what. And that, there you go, right there. This is someone that no company wants to touch right now. <laughs> all right. So if right. it was about degree and Gatorade and Home Depot and Allstate and all those, Rafa Marquez on this list is a liability. Like they're looking at that going, oh my goodness, because of all the things that's happened with Rafa Marquez. So that kind of tells me that Astorio doesn't care about that. Another thing yeah, that I'm, tells I'm, me, I'm not surprised by that at all, though. Yeah, I'm not at either. Another thing, there was no no one leaked this 23, you know, 28 uh, players. Not a single reporter had already an exclusive. It was like we already knew before Piojo was telling you on Twitter. He did it himself. Like, I don't think Osorio bends to that nature of, oh, it's all about commercials and money. Granted, the FMF is the FMF, but at least Osorio, he's bringing Rafa in that case. So um, I, so, what, so who are the five? So we both all agree, we all agree on, on, on Molina, on Guti. Alanis, maybe. Alanis. Every everybody's healthy. I think I think I have a different five. I, I don't think Jurgen Dam's gonna make it as much as Osorio yeah. really likes him. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Os- the Osorio really just realized that he doesn't need someone like Dam. Maybe maybe he he brought Dam into the twenty eight because he likes Dam, but maybe he'll recognize that he can't bring him into the the final twenty three. So I'm I'm still saying that Dam's gonna get cut. Eric Gutierrez we already talked about. Molina we talked about. Edson Alvarez has just been in an awful. A run of form. I, I really, I, I really liked that Alvarez, and for I would say like a, a month, maybe two months uh, earlier this year, or maybe late last year, I was thinking, no, Edson should be in the eleven for Mexico. I was convinced by it, but I mean, just in the past, I mean, but almost the entire season for Medica, he's been really bad. I mean, he's mm-hmm. been very, very bad. So I, I think Edson gets dropped, and after that, it's between Ayala and Alanis. But I don't know. I guess you could also you say Kino too. Them. Yeah, I I, I think he's I, gonna take, I think he's gonna take one. I think if you drop Edson, you have to keep either Ayala mm-hmm. or Alanis. You can't. Mm-hmm. You, I feel like you have to keep one of them. So I don't know. I, I I I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Ayala doesn't make it because I, I, I think Alanis is also one of those guys that Osorio and Tom talked about it in the Captain Russia. He convinced he that, that that he uh, Osorio likes Alanis. Yeah. You know, no one we talked about is Gallardo. I was about to say that. Yeah. yeah. Everyone no, but, think he's going or. Yeah, right. like I, I wouldn't. I, it's funny how you know all of a sudden Gaier is just sneaking in, and no one's talking about this player who no experience before is one of the new the new guys for at least for the fans. And yeah. and but we're starting to see that that um, uh, Osorio really likes him. I think that that and also if Layun gets that, injured, it's just a guarantee Gaier is going to play in that position because that, the way that Osorio that interior likes that interior position that is we're yeah. going to be hearing that a ton this summer. It's like it was like four years ago the five three two. This is going to be the interior summer for all the World Cup teams. Just watch. Yeah. So I think I think because uh, I mean it seems like Gallardo is just a shoe in at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. He's a good guy. Got got to meet him, uh, and uh, he's definitely very excited. Good, good head on his shoulders. All right, guys. Let's see what are we saying on the uh, on the chat. Cari Torres asked, "Does anyone agree with me that Marcus over Reyes?" <laughs> I you know yeah it's, I never liked Reyes either so. Um, is there any okay? Really quick, Jason and and and, and Cesar, I don't think you know we talked about Rafa. So everyone yeah. agrees about Rafa, but really quick, who if Rafa wasn't there, what other defender would be there? I don't. I think that's. 
I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I think maybe you could make the argument what other defensive midfield would, would be there. Because I think if Rafa does get, somehow does get minutes, it would be as a defensive midfield. Because I think putting him as that center back would be one of the most dangerous things you can do. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Yeah, so I, I think it would be what 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 other defensive midfielder, or maybe you could even say Burrito would even be in the mm-hmm. in the twenty eight. I don't think he would make the final twenty three. Rios, I think, was another name mentioned there by his by yeah. by Osorio I mean, Rios Burrito. Me, I mean, we talked about um, Molina coming there and taking uh, the spot that Gaito have, but Rafa Marquez has has Gaito's spot for me. I think that's the, the the logical. But I mean, there's there's several players that you could plug into that. If, uh, if you even want me to bring up Cesar Montes again, I could do that. I thought um, we were going to do that. <laughs> I just did it. Jonathan uh, Gonzalez. Jo- exactly, Jonathan Gonzalez. Yeah, we could yeah. tackle more Gavea. I mean, oh, there's, yeah, there's, there's yeah. options there that you you can use. Um, this I don't reminds know. me, all I'm players I'd rather see playing than Rafa Marquez. All respect to Rafa Marquez. It's just it just doesn't happen anymore. Hold on a second. Going back to my February notes where John Arnold said that Jonathan Gonzalez was going to be at the World Cup. I got to go back I mean, to that. Is that when he went all in? Is yes, he he's in? like, okay. all in, Jonathan Gonzalez. Mm. Yeah, got to cash him out. Are you, are, are, you sure, are you sure that wasn't me? Uh, maybe we'll say it was John Arnold because I'm pretty sure I said that. But yeah. <laughs> is that what you said? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. No. Let's say that was John uh, I got to look at the notes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, guys. Well, very, very eventful day. It looks like Mondays now. We got to wait for what news come out. Uh, Cesar, tell us uh, as far as the calendar. What's next for Mexico? When does the twenty-three list have to be in? Some games. What What do we have in the horizon for El Tri and all the El Tri fans? All right, I got the schedule right here. So May twenty-fourth, they're flying out to LA. May 28th, they're going to have that friendly versus Wales uh, in Pasadena. Uh, I talked to Tom earlier, and he did confirm that on the on the night of the 28th, they're actually flying back uh, to Mexico City after the match, uh, okay. and that one in Pasadena. Uh, then they'll be training in, in Mexico until the friendly on June 2nd, for, uh, which they'll be taking on Scotland in Mexico City. Uh, then they'll be flying to Copenhagen on June 3rd. Uh, they got the friendly against Denmark at Copenhagen on June 9th, and then they're flying to Russia on June 11th. Then, of course, on June 4th, uh, it'll be made public what uh, Mexico's final 23-man roster will look like. June 4th, there it is. Which, again, I, don't, I think there's going to be that many surprises. Looking out for the injuries, I think that's going to be key. Um, there was another question that was asked to Osorio this morning um, after the press conference that it said, you know, at what point do you go, yeah, you're not ready? to the injured people, right, to the injured players. And it was three weeks was the was the magic. In three weeks, if they're not recuperated, at least ready to play in some way or form, you know, that's when he's going to have to take, uh, you know, the initiative of getting another player. And he went through all of them too. He said, you know, uh, I think Araujo's ready to go. If, if Guardado, that's the only one that's kind of in the key, is Guardado's going to take two weeks in order for him to start tr- training after that. It, that's if it goes well. I think you make the case of bringing Guardado and maybe take those two games and, and maybe he's not ready for right right 100%, but you still bring Guardado, what he can bring, um, and you have that. But then you have the Geos and the Jonas uh, where you don't even know what's happening. It kind of kept off quiet and all of a sudden they're not ready to go. So that was one of the things. And then another interesting thing, to not not to go, be going really quick, but um, he did mention that if someone does get injured, which I don't understand this, but he said, he's done this before. If someone gets injured, let's say, okay, Guardado's not going to make it anymore, or Jonah's not going to make it, he can bring other players that are not in the 28 list. He made sure, Univision, this was on Univision after. So he said, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be those extra five players. So he can bring I mean, you other have, players. I mean, you have you have to have a preliminary 30. You have to send a preliminary 35. No, right? he said, but he didn't bring. He said that he didn't send a 35. He said up to, but he can still bring in, which makes me think, well, so hmm. did you send a 35 over or did you not? So, I'm not sure. But I, I think I, I got to look at it. I'm looking at the FIFA ruling after this. I'm looking at yeah, that. I'm, I'm saying, not, I'm not the sure. Word is, the word is up to, and that's he He stressed that. But then he said, I can I can call another player that um, – if, if they're injured, and I'm like, okay, well, then I guess you do have 35 players. Anyway, what I guess gives you a little bit of hope is that we've seen where where Osorio has his list of 23, then one gets injured, and then he brings another random player and starts that player, right? Like, we've yeah. seen that. And that's where I kind of see if maybe there's still a hope that 
if 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 one of those players does get injured, a Pizarro will come in. He did mention Pizarro, Burrito, and Rios were in his list that he's been looking at. You know that, but they didn't call up. So who knows? Uh, that twenty three is going to be the final one. Then there's going to be injuries. If hopefully not, and hope and, and he can still make those. So. Um, we'll see where that goes uh, on the final 23. I know we've run out of time. Uh, great, great show. I don't know what happened to Mr. Colorful Kid. He said he was leaving. I think it was some internet issues because he couldn't hear Jason. Um, but um, uh, hopefully everything everything's okay. Cesar, thank you very much. Your season, I wish, I was hoping Charlos will make it so we can, I was actually going to try to see if I can make that final in San Diego. Oh, totally. Well, you should Tijuana, come to but should Charlos didn't make it. Come hang, hang out in San Diego anyways. We'll still go to Tijuana. I don't know. Let's go to Tijuana. Hey, let's do it. Watch the we'll games. Visit, we'll visit the stadium. No one's going to be there. I'll show you around. It'll be great. Good times. Time nice. Good, good times. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for, for, for joining in. Tom had the day off. Um, uh, doing doing lots recording the CTR podcast was already posted today, right, Cesar? Yeah, you and, yeah. Uh, so, so if you guys want thirty more minutes of count of uh, roster talk about L3, that went up earlier today. Uh, so for all of our Patreon followers, uh, the four dollar uh, plus point. So yeah, that's a. If you guys are interested, patreon.com slash the Mexican soccer show. And then we'll probably do another one later on this week. I know we've been doing, sometimes we do a couple of weeks. Sometimes Tom posts an interview. So it'll be good times. Like uh, you guys should all check it out if you haven't uh, already seen it or heard it because you're not seeing it because it's isn't like the show. You're listening to it. You're listening to it. All right. I didn't even mention Elias Hernandez in there. So, so. Meh. We'll, uh, we'll Meh. see. We'll see where it's at. Meh. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you all on the chat. Lots of you. Please, please continue to share this. After a couple of days, say hey, I listen to this. Uh, well, we uh, we definitely love all the comments that you guys had, and also if you're not part of the CTR podcast, the countdown of Russia on our Patreon, definitely be a part of it. It's really awesome, and thank you for supporting us. Hasta la próxima, and we'll see you guys on the next edition of the Mexican Soccer Show. Who knows what kind of crazy news are going to come out? I'm sure we're going to talk about all about the final um, next Monday and whatever other news come about. Uh, hopefully, no injury related news. Hasta la próxima. Nos vemos. Adiós.